Hey everyone! Today I'd like to go on a little time travel with you, showing off how I got started making games and which applications and games I actually created in the past three years. Let's begin! Back then I used a cool framework called Processing, which is a simple Java-based rendering engine. There's also a JavaScript counterpart called P5.js. It lacks any interface or deeper functionality like physics or collision detection, so it really just draws shapes onto a canvas. Anyway, my first actual application was a very simple fluid simulation. It consisted of many tiny physics objects that interacted with each other. You could attract and repulse the objects when pressing mouse buttons, and as you can tell the simulation was a bit faulty, but fun to play around with nevertheless. The Game of Life is a classic approach of a simple life simulation. Basically, there is a big grid of cells. Every cell can either be dead or alive. There are three rules that dictate if a cell lives or dies in the current generation, based on the amount of neighbors it has. If you then quickly iterate through many generations, you can see an almost organic looking movement pattern. Now, some cell arrangements reside in a stable, stationary or moving shape. These shapes are also known as oscillators. Again, you actually don't play the game, but it's definitely fun to watch. Now, there's so much more to Conway's Game of Life, but I won't go into further detail here. I mainly recoded this game to practice programming and also because I found the topic very interesting. The next prototype I created was a Mario shooter, I guess. It looked and played awful, but I mostly did this to learn the basic principles of game development. You could move, jump, shoot. And once you killed all enemies, the next wave would rain upon you. Speaking of the enemy, the AI was pretty funky. I basically randomized the actions of the enemy, meaning they either jumped, walked or shot, based on a random value. Yes, this is as illegal as it sounds, but that's everything I could do back then. I also coded my own collision detection in this one, which was pretty rough. All of the stickmen were also drawn through the library, so no actual sprites. My next little prototype was a tower defense. You could place towers and had to kill hostile units on their way to your base. I used sprites for the first time in this one. Again, pretty basic and also pretty crappy. The enemies didn't even follow the path directly, yet I learned a lot of new things. Everything was still done in processing, so no actual game engine. The closest thing to a game I created in processing was Obviate. This was a very silly Smash Bros clone, which could be played locally on one keyboard. It featured several mechanics like melee, shooting, double jumping, wall sliding, dashing, power pickups, portals, and even different maps. It was very unstable, especially in terms of collision detection. If you generated enough speed, you could tunnel through walls, which is a very common problem with simplistic collision detection in video games. But it was actually very fun to play. This was my first actual game using a real game engine. I have been messing around in Unity for quite some time back then and teamed up with a random guy on Discord to start drafting on our first game jam entry. This was on the peak of the COVID lockdown so we somehow ended up making a game about a virus that has to infect the human body. The twist is that you don't actually directly kill enemy cells but rather command your minions to kill enemy cells and let them do the work. It was a short, fun bullet hell with a non-existent art style and it took us 7 days to create this game.
This was my first game with a somewhat existing quality. A first person horror game where you had to escape a blacked out space station. I actually hit 4th place for the sound design in the whole game jam, which was awesome. Small fun fact, to create the screeching sound of the monster, I actually scrapped a knife over the frozen surface of my freezer and applied some processing. Gotta get creative. The game even featured some voice lines and a cool scripted end sequence, which took me a whole night to implement. This game was also created in seven days. Another game gem entry. This time a top-down shooter where you had to infiltrate a foreign planet. The twist was that you had to make enemies vulnerable at first before you could actually kill them. You could also dash and had to take care of the heat of your main weapon while rescuing three scientists. I wanted to focus on the art this time and try to merge different realistic 3D assets. I think the look turned out pretty nice. The game also featured some voice lines and some short cinematic sequences. Now, Lost Light is the only actual game I released so far. It's a short but fleshed out experience with everything a game should have, including a proper main menu and a save and load system. The game is set within a desert and you play as a little robot that has to repower a lighthouse. The whole game is based on a music video from the band Starset and I think I did a pretty good job of translating the video into an actual game. Lost Light was perceived pretty well with just minor design flaws. Today I likely would have added some form of enemy or threat, since right now it's more of an interactive experience, but that's also something. I learned so much when creating Lost Light and I also understood how hard it is to implement trivial things like menus and audio settings. It took me roughly 6 months of my free time to create Lost Light. That's my current passion project. Right now, roughly 6 months in development. It's a dark and atmospheric third person shooter where you have to infiltrate a mysterious underground facility with your team. As you can tell, it's heavily inspired by the Resident Evil and Dead Space franchise. There are a lot of basic systems in place already, but there's still a lot to be done here. You can find devlogs here on my YouTube channel where I documented the process of development. My current plan is to have a Steam demo ready for summer of 2023, so everyone can get a good idea on how this game is played. Speaking of Steam, I actually just launched a Steam page for Dev Sketches. So if this looks interesting to you, please hit that wishlist button. It's totally free and supports me and this project. Thank you. Um, and that's my journey in game development over the last few years. It was a steep learning curve, especially once you begin working with an actual game engine. There are so many more aspects to it than just programming. But having coded several fundamental core functionalities of game development and processing myself definitely helped me in understanding greater and advanced concepts in Unity. I linked to a very good beginner tutorial for programming which utilizes the rendering engine P5.js in the description. I used this exact video series of Decoding Train myself to pick up the core concepts of programming. So feel free to check that out if you want to learn that skill as well. That's it for today. Check out my itch.io if you want to play any of my Unity games for free. Also, wishlist dev scourges. I hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching and please don't spill your beer.